let's proceed for the part 2 of RBC pathology. For this video, we will discuss disorders of iron kinetics, anemia caused by DNA metabolism defects, and disorders of erythropoiesis. Recall nga natin yung ating lecture ng iron kinetics back in midterms. Okay? Ano, saan daw ang site of iron absorption? It is found at the duodenum. With the help of what proteins? Your ferroportin and DMT1. Ano naman ang regu regulatory hormone for the usage of your iron? It is uh, hepcidin. Uh, makikita natin, ito ang pro main problem in anemia of chronic inflammation. Transferrin naman is your transport hormone for your iron. And ang storage form naman comes with two forms. Water-soluble yung ferritin. Water-insoluble naman si hemosiderin. Okay? So, ito ang nag-accumulate if ever nagkaroon tayo ng iron overload. For the assessment of levels of iron in the body, we make use of the following confirmatory tests. Okay, unahin natin yung mga routinely ginagawa sa laboratory. So first, serum iron, which is a direct measure of the levels of the iron in the blood. Ang TIBC, kabalik tara niya sa serum iron. Ito naman, this is an indirect measure. Kapag mababa ang levels ng iron, tumataas ang TIBC level. Okay, so to further explain that, Di ba ang transferin yung ating transport uh, hormone for iron? Kapag walang uh, nagbabind sa transferin na iron, okay, wala siyang tinatransport or wala siyang dinadalang iron, ibig sabihin ang, ibig, ang TIBC natin no, mataas based on the free transferin levels. Okay? Direct measure siya ng transferin but not the iron level. Lastly, for the routine testing of iron is your serum ferritin. Ferritin, again, this is the storage form of iron which is water-soluble. Okay? Ito yung ating metabolically active iron na ginagamit for the uh, production of hemoglobin. Next naman, yung mga hindi masyadong ginagamit routinely. No, for special studies or para um antal dito for research purposes, okay? First jan is the transferrin saturation. Transferrin saturation kino compute yan, no? Based dun sa mga routine data, uh, iron data. So kukunin mo yung data of your serum iron and your TIBC multiply by 100 kasi in percentage form yan, no? Uh, this can be, uh, kunyari, mas madaming uh, iron, mas konti ang TIBC, mas mataas si transferrin saturation. Ang ibig lang sabihin kasi nitong saturation, ilan ang mga iron molecules na nagbind sa transferrin molecule. Okay? Next, STFR or soluble transferrin receptors. These are the available receptors na hindi pa nagagamit ng uh, iron. Okay? Again, dun tayo kay transferrin. No? Kung, um, uh, uh, kung, kung halimbawa madami ang available receptor, ibig sabihin walang dumikit na iron. Kapag mababa ang, ang free na receptors, ibig sabihin madami nakadikit na iron sa transferrin. And then further, Check mo ulit, gagamitin mo yung data nito for the next test. No? The STFR over log of ferritin. Itong formula na to will further differentiate the two condition of uh, anemia of chronic inflammation and IDA. Kasi in some cases, no, they may exist concurrently. No? Sabay silang nag-exist sa isang pasyente. So, baka mali yung management na ibibigay mo. Baka 
lagi ka lang nag iron supplementation, yung pala ACI ang problem. Or ACI ang, ang minamanage mo, nakakalimutan mo na na meron palang iron deficiency. So, ito ang ginagamit na formula to differentiate the two. And then, other specialized tests, no, ginagamit, most commonly in research, okay, Number one, your FEP or the free erythrocyte protoporphyrin. In this type of testing, kapag mataas yung levels nito, ibig sabihin, no, wala ka na form na hemoglobin. This is part of the heme synthesis. Actually, the last part, no, protoporphyrin will bind to, if ever, no, available iron to form your hem uh, hemoglobin with the help of this enzyme called ferrochelatase. So, halimbawa, meron kang mga problems such as wala kang available na iron and kung may defective enzyme ka sa ferrochelatase, ibig sabihin, nag-accumulate ngayon si protoporphyrin, hindi siya nako-convert into hemoglobin. Okay? Next, Prussian blue stain Staining technique naman, ito ang ginagamit for the bone marrow aspirate examination, lalong-lalo na if you suspect the following, kung may iron deficiency or iron overload. Because this type of staining will stain the iron content of the cells. Okay? And in, ano, in summary, ito yung gold standard talaga, lalo na if you suspect these two types of condition. So, under microscope, no, it, this is bone marrow aspirate specimen. No? Uh, yung blue color na yan, yan yung iron pigments sa loob ng mga cells. And in other books, ang tawag dito sa pigmentation is what you call ring, ring sideroblast. Okay? Kasi they form a ring for um, formation, no? Dun, lalo na doon sa cytoplasm ng mga cells. So let's proceed with the disorders of iron kinetics. Unahin natin yung mga grupo na to. No? Ito yung mga microcytic hypochromic anemia. Pinatanda ko sa inyo kanina yung mnemonics natin na ATIS, no? A, anemia of chronic inflammation, T, thalassemia, I, IDA, and S, sideroblastic anemia. So, as an overview, ano ba ang meron per condition? Unahin natin si ACI. Dito, meron tayong increased levels of hepcidin. Remember nyo yung uh, function ng hepcidin, no? Kapag increase ang levels ng hepcidin, ibig sabihin, mababa yung levels na pwedeng, ng iron na pwedeng gamitin for the synthesis of him. Sa thalassemia naman, there's an absence or deficiency of globin chains. Remember, globin chains comprise, comprises your hemoglobin. No? Kapag walang, uh, walang globin or uh, kokonte yung ating globin uh, protein, hindi nabubuo ng uh, sufficiently or effectively yung hemoglobin. So therefore, yung iron storage natin mababa din. Iron deficiency anemia naman dito, yung true uh, or talaga, talagang mababa yung levels ng iron in the serum. In contrast with the first two, hindi, hindi walang problema yung iron levels. But the, halimbawa dito sa ACI, ang problema talaga is hepcidin, hindi yung mababang levels of iron. And in thalassemia as well. Walang ma hindi mababa ang levels ng iron mo dito. Ang pangit lang is yung globin property of the hemoglobin. Okay? And then for this one, sideroblastic anemia, okay din yung levels ng iron. Pero there is an abnormal accumulation. Dahil baka may problema with the heme synthesis enzyme such as in porphyria. And kapag may mga toxicity that would inhibit the enzymes of the heme synthesis, such as in lead poisoning. Okay, unahin natin ang ACI. No? Uh, in some books, mababasa nyo pa rin, ACD yung 
kanilang term. Parehas lang naman yan, no? Anemia of chronic inflammation or disease, pwede yan i-apply. Um, the central feature of this disease is sideropenia with abundant iron stores. Ano ibig sabihin ng sideropenia? Walang mga iron content yung mga red blood cells mo. Pero pagdating mo sa storage area, merong accumulation or, or um, abnormal abundant levels. Bakit kaya hindi napupunta yung iron na to papunta dun sa RBC? Dahil ito sa abnormal, abnormally high level of hepcidin. Remember, hepcidin, ito yung magdi-distribute ng iron storage mo papunta sa mga dapat um, or sa mga organs na nangangailangan ng iron. Halimbawa, yung bone marrow, kailangan niya iron para dun sa RBCs. Okay? So, therefore, kapag sobra-sobra yung levels ng hepcidin mo, yung iron, no, uh, hindi napupunta dun sa tamang place. Okay? And then, ano yung mga disorders ba na associated with anemia of chronic inflammation? This is just a manifestation of a bigger problem. Okay? So, hindi ito yung final diagnosis. So, you have to investigate no, kung ano yung, mga nag, ano yung main cause ng anemia in ACI. So, halimbawa, uh, in cancer patients, no, and in SLE, ano yung ibig sabihin ng SLE? Uh, systemic lupus erythematosus, no? CKD naman, chronic kidney disease. So, uh, meron silang common denominator na they cause extreme inflammation in more than one organ. Okay, another problem with ACI is that it can coexist with iron deficiency anemia. Okay? Pwedeng solo lang ito and, pw and pwede rin tong in combination with another. So, paano natin uh, dinidifferentiate yan? Again, by using this formula, your STFR over the lag of ferritin. Pag more than 2 ang ratio na nakuha natin, most probably the patient is suffering from IDA. Kapag less than 1 naman, ACI alone ang problema natin. Balikan natin si hepcidin, no? In normal patient, ito yan, okay? Meron tayong iron uptake, no? From the food that we intake or the from the supplementation that we receive, okay? And then, mahuform si ferritin as a storage form. Kapag kailangan na ng katawan mo, no? Lalabas si ferritin dun sa storage area niya, papunta dun sa mga organs na kailangan na yung iron, such as in bone marrow, to produce your RBCs. If ever, no, nagkaroon ng ACI ang pasyente, ano nangyayari? Di ba sabi natin, increase ang levels ng hepcidin. Ano ba ang role ng hepcidin for this uh, pathway? Si hepcidin kasi, pag increase yan, no, or present in the blood system, pwede niyang ihinder, no, it acts as a door. Uh, preventing the release of your ferritin uh, from the storage area. So, therefore, walang lumalabas na iron sa storage area, walang mapuproduce na hem hemoglobin. Okay? So, bagsak ang ating uh, RBC production. Kaya nakakaroon ng anemia. Okay, let's proceed to the next condition called IDA or iron deficiency anemia. So, mag kapag ganito yung uh, presentation, you have to investigate ano yung source, ano, ano ang major cause of the deficient iron. So, there are four mechanisms. Number one, inadequate intake. No? Um, hindi yung, yung diet niya is poor in iron. Okay? Number two, there's an increased need, lalong-lalo na sa mga pregnant women. No? Kasi dalawa ang kailangan ng um tag dito yung iron mag double duty kumbaga no kasi kailangan din niya mag distribute ng uh, oxygen towards the uh, baby and then may impaired absorption lalo na at the level of duodenum and lastly 
Baka may chronic blood loss. Ano nga ulit ang ibig sabihin ng chronic blood loss? There is a lo loss of blood of more than 6 months that can be seen in the following situation. In adult males, ang most common cause ng chronic blood loss ay colon cancer. Sa adult females naman, high menstrual flow. Sa mga bata, uh, baka may parasitism, uh, most commonly caused by hookworm infection. And sa mga bata, no, ma-observe mo din the uh, manifestation called pika. Pika means an unusual eating habit. Pa gaano ka-unusual itong pika na to? Uh, may mga bata na kumakain ng um, lupa or pencil, papel, ganyan. Kasi their body uh, needs to compensate what is missing. No? Ahanap at hanapin ng source of the iron. Kasi nga deficient nga yung at kanilang katawan. So, meron tayong unusual neuropathy. No? May brain affectation dun sa mga bata. We have three stages of iron deficiency anemia. Ang unang stage is the storage iron depletion. So in this stage, kung mapapansin nyo sa ating laboratory testing, storage iron ang unang madideplete. So ang ma-appreciate mo palang na mababa dito is the le level, levels of peritin. Okay? Sa stage 2, Meron, tayo, meron na tayong depletion, pati yung transport uh, iron. So, maapektuhan yung mga transferrin, okay? And the serum iron itself. So, ma-appreciate ma ma mo sa stage 2, mababang ay serum iron. Mataas ang TIBC, persistently low si ferritin. Bakit nga ba baligtad ang TIBC? This is an indirect measure of your serum iron. So, dapat baligtad yung, yung dalawang yan. Pagdating sa stage 3, functional iron deficiency, uh, depletion na ang nangyayari. And this is the full-blown iron deficiency anemia. So, dito mo palang ma-appreciate yung pagbagsak ni hemoglobin. Okay? Minsan, too late na kasi hindi naman routinely ginagawa itong serum iron, TIBC, and ferritin in a usual physical examination. So, ano lang, CBC lang, no? uh, including the hemoglobin. So, late na natin na discover yung full-blown IDA. Dito naman sa sideroblastic anemia, ano ang problem natin dito? the accumulation of a of iron in the body. So, madalas natin ma-appreciate itong accumulation, lalong-lalong na sa loob ng mga RBCs. Okay? Kapag mature RBC, um, ang, mga, ang tawag doon is siderocytes. Kapag ang iron accumulation naman, ma-appreciate mo doon sa immature RBCs, ang tawag dyan, sideroblast. Okay? So, tatandaan natin yan sa question stem. Check nyo mabuti kung immature or mature RBC ang, ang nasa question. Sideroblastic anemia, ang two major causes niyan are the following. Porphyrias and lead poisoning. Porphyrias is the umbrella term of defects in heme synthesis. Talong lalo na dun sa mga enzyme um, incorporated in this pathway. So, um, ang lead poisoning naman, meron tayong inhibition. Okay? Present lahat ng enzymes, pero dahil sa lead toxicity, nagkakaroon ng inactivation of these enzymes. Ano naman ang mga enzyme involved in lead poisoning? Tandaan natin yung mnemonics na FALAD, no? Eferokelatase, ALAD for ALA dehydratase. Take note natin ha, dehydratase kasi meron pang isang enzyme in him, in, in him synthesis na ganito yung abbreviation which is ALA dehydrogenase. So, hindi siya involved in lead poisoning. Tandaan natin yung dehydratase yung involved. 
Okay, balikan natin si porphyria. So, yun nga, meron tayong impaired production of him dahil bagsak or deficient yung levels of your enzymes. And uh, from for nomenclature, no, porphyria means purple. Dahil by history, yung mga physicians before na ang... ang Nati-take note nila or na-examine nila sa pasyente may porphyria, umiihi sila ng purple colored urine or tinatawag natin wine red urine. Okay? Back in AUBF, ano nga ulit ang test for porphyria? Diba? Watson-Schwartz test. Okay, going back to our topic. Porphyria can be acquired and hereditary. No? Acquired kapag uh, victim sila ng, mga, ng lead poisoning. Okay? And hereditary naman, diba, go, uh, going back to cytogen, kapag deficient no? yung proteins, anong pattern of Mendelian inheritance yun? Is it autosomal dominant or recessive? It is recessive kasi deficient, no? Kulang yung, yung protein or enzyme. So, mostly autosomal recessive. But not all porphyrias are autosomal recessive. So, titina natin yan later on. So, balikan natin yung heme synthesis with the corresponding enzymes. Okay? In porphyria, yun nga, if uh, meron tayong deficient or absent enzyme, it can lead to purple colored urine or wine red urine. Okay? Pero not all of the following disorder can cause hematologic defect. Okay? So, bawat uh, enzyme deficiency may pangalan yung mga yan. No? Halimbawa, dito sa ALA synthase, kapag absent or deficient yan, it will cause allied porphyria. Halimbawa, dito kay uh, Coproporphyrinogen oxidase, kapag absent or deficient yan, it will lead to hereditary coproporphyria. Pero anyway, no, hindi ko yan ipapamemorize sa inyo. Ang ipapatanda ko lang yung mga condition na can lead to anemia. Okay? Tatlo yung, um, por, tatlo yung type ng porphyria na related sa anemia. Unahin natin itong CEP or congenital erythropoietic porphyria and erythropoietic protoporphyria which has two types. So tatlo yung, tatlo lang sa sa mga porphyria yung related sa anemia. Okay? So ito yung mga yan. Balikan natin yung EP natin no, erythropoietic um protoporphyria. So dalawa yung types ng mga yan, no? Depende yan dun sa enzyme affectation. Okay? Sa CEP, congenital erythropoietic deficiency, ang affected na enzyme is the uroporphyrinogen 3 synthase, which is autosomal recessive in uh, inheritance. Atong erythropoietic protoporphyria pero kelatase deficiency sila. And ang pattern is autosomal dominant. Ang X-link erythropoietic protoporphyria uh, is caused by absent or deficient ALA synthase 2. And this is, and this follows an X-link dominant pattern. Okay. For the investigation of the different types of microcytic hypochromic anemia, you make use of the following uh, parameters. So you request for serum iron, peritin, TIBC, and transferrin saturation. In IDA, in thalassemia, no, uh, ipagsabay natin to dahil halos parehas sila in uh, patient manifestation. Okay? So halos baligtad sila, no? There is a low iron, peritin, and transferrin saturation in IDA dahil nga sa bagsak na iron um, levels. No? This is the true uh, iron deficiency. Okay? Sa thalassemia, walang deficient na iron. 
only globin problem. So, mapapansin nyo, naiipon lang yung iron, ferritin, and the transferring saturation is also increased. PIBC, baligtad tayo dyan. No? Okay, pagdating kay ACI, we have to take note that there is an increased hepcidine. So, derange lahat ng iron forms natin sa serum. Naiipon lang sila dun sa storage area in the form of ferritin. Okay, so tinan natin yung expected laboratory findings of ACI. So, mapapansin nyo lahat mababa. Okay. Kasi lahat may ipon a storage form no, in the form of ferritin. So, ito lang ang normal to increase. In sideroblastic anemia naman, baligtad siya ni ACI. Okay? Um, ang problem natin dito is the enzymes of heme synthesis. No? Okay sana yung iron natin. Kaso, may ipon sila due to non-usage. Okay? Hindi natin nagagamit. So, naiipon ng iron sa serum, naiipon ng iron sa asferritin in the storage area, and the transference saturation as well. Remember nga natin, di ba, transference saturation is directly proportional to your serum iron. Indirectly proportional lang si TIBC. Okay, iron overload naman. So, aside from being deficient, no, yun yung major problem natin with iron, di ba? Madaling mawala or madaling mabawasan. Merong cases naman na nag-overload tayo. In cases of, number one, the major cause of iron overload is the uh, um, excessive iron supplementation. Lalo na sa mga patient na hindi naman kailangan talaga ng iron. So, ingat tayo in taking iron tablets. Okay? Dapat na uh, dapat na-establish talaga na mababa nga yung iron levels nyo. Kung hindi, magkakaroon tayo ng problema. So, in this problem kasi, no, normally, ang ferritin should be excreted through urine and hemosiderin is deposited in bone marrow in, and in other organs na kailangan ng iron such as in liver and skin. So, ito ang normal storage area ng, or, so, uh, or the normal pathway for the ferritin and hemosiderin. Kapag nagkaroon ng overload, okay, the ferritin uh, is still continuously excreted to, through your urine, no? pero ang problem natin is hemosiderin. It is water insoluble. Therefore, wala kang means para mailabas mo to kahit sumosobra na sila. So, it will be deposited not only in the bone marrow plus other organs. So, titinan natin ano pa yung ibang organs na pwede magtago yung hemosiderin. And another um, cause, di ba kanina napanggit ko sa inyo, the major cause is the iron supplementation. Ang other cause is the hemochromatosis, which is in uh, hereditary in nature. Namamana ito. So, tuloy tayo with this type of iron overload. Uh, sabi nga natin, no, hereditary in nature siya. Ibig sabihin, may genetic defect. Ano ang genetic defect nitong 
condition na to, it's at the HFE protein which will um tag dito, which has an um role in managing your ferroportin and hemosiderin levels in the body. So ano nangyayari kapag mayroon kang mutation in HFE protein? Number one, there's an excessive absorption by your ferroportin. Naalala nyo si ferroportin, saan makikita ito? Sa duodenum, kasi siya yung may role in iron absorption. And then next, there is an excess stored iron in the form of hemosiderin. Di ba ang storage natin is either ferritin and hemosiderin? So, in, kapag may HFE protein mutation, halos lahat ng iron mo nakoconvert into this type of storage form. Now, di ba nabanggit ko sa inyo, kapag mas sobra-sobra ang hemosiderin natin, pwede yan magtago in, uh, in other organs aside from your bone marrow. So, pwede sa liver, which can cause cirrhosis and even liver cancer. Okay? sa pancreas which may cause diabetes kasi sisirain niya yung mga um, beta cells of the pancreas which produces your insulin. Kaya kapag mababa ang insulin mo, magkakaroon ka ng diabetes. Pero in this case, ang tawag sa diabetes niya is bronze dia uh, diabetes dahil yung skin ng pasyente bronze-like in color. Ah, uh, yun nga, uh, yung skin magkakaroon ng uh, ganitong kulay dahil na deposit yung hemosiderin underneath the epithelium. And lastly, uh, pwede mag-deposit in dun sa heart muscles causing congestive heart failure. So ano ang kulay ng bronze diabetes or bronze skin ng hemochromatosis? So ito yung color niya, no? Uh, sabi sa book, golden brown in color. Okay? Kung face-to-face -face lang tayo, no? pwede natin i-check yung mga classmates natin, seatmates, for this type of uh, skin manifestation. Okay? Next topic for defects for... We can further classify macrocytic anemia to megaloblastic anemia and non-megaloblastic anemia. So, paano ito yung nadi-differentiate to in the laboratory? Uh, we will request for peripheral blood smear and bone marrow aspirate. So, ano ang difference ng dalawa? Meg both megaloblastic and non-megaloblastic will present large cells in peripheral blood smear. Pero, pagdating sa bone marrow aspirate, ang large blast cell can only be expected or appreciated in the megaloblastic anemia. Normal ang size ng mga blast cells in the non-megaloblastic anemia. Okay? What are the primary causes of each condition? Sa megaloblastic anemia muna tayo. It is primarily caused by vitamin B9 deficiency or the folate deficiency and vitamin B12 deficiency or cobalamin deficiency, which might be caused by pernicious anemia. Natatandaan nyo kanina, di ba? Hindi lahat ng cause ng, hindi lagi, I mean, hindi major cause ng vitamin B12 deficiency ang pernicious anemia. Meron pa tong other causes. But, no? however, pernicious anemia will always eventually result to vitamin B12 deficiency.
So, dito naman tayo sa mga major causes of non-megaloblastic anemia. Focus muna tayo sa 1, 2, and 3. Um, bakit kaya normal yung uh, cells natin dun sa loob ng bone marrow, paglabas niya, no, sa peripheral blood smear naman, malaki yung mga RBC. So, in this condition, mali or pangit yung, yung formation of the RBC membrane, making the RBC membrane looks like an enlarged cell. Okay? Pero ang blast cells natin, okay yung RBC maturation. So, na maintain yung um, normal cell size sa loob ng bone marrow. Sa number 4 naman, normal newborn status. Bakit may mga large cells sa peripheral blood smear? Tandaan natin, no? Kasi, uh, kasi nga, yung ating um, membrane and the hemoglobin content, it's much more different as compared into adult. Diba? Meron tayong mga fetal hemoglobins pa persistent in the newborns and this will make uh, or produce macrocyte or macrocytic RBCs. Okay, dito naman tayo dun sa presence of hypersegmented neutrophil. Present lang ito dito sa mga megaloblastic anemia. Kasi nga, uh, ang neutrophil hypersegmentation is a sign of an abnormal hematopoietic process. No? Abnormal yung RBC maturation not only in RBC, but also in WBCs. Okay? Walang abnormal maturation dito, da, kaya wala, rin, wala ka rin ma-appreciate na hypersegmented neutrophils. Okay? Sa shape naman ng mga macrocytes, okay, sa megaloblastic anemia, mo lang ma-appreciate ang oval macrocytes, non-megaloblastic naman, round macrocytes. Okay? So, to further explain the megaloblastic anemia, so, kailan ba yan nag-uumpisa? No? Mag-uumpisa yan kapag mababa yung mga vitamin level, which is, um, has an important role in the DNA synthesis. These vitamins are your B9 or folic acid and cobalamin or vitamin B12. Pagbagsak yan, ang unang maapektuhan is the WBC maturation. Na makikita nyo, in neutrophils, hypersegmented ang lobes or nucleus ng neutrophils. Sa peripheral blood smear naman, ma-appreciate mo yung oval macrocytes. Okay? And in the bone marrow, madami kang ma-appreciate na large blast cells o yung tinatawag natin na condition na megaloblastosis. So aside from what I have mentioned, idagdag na rin natin, no? We can also observe for the RBC inclusion called Howell Jolly Bodies. So as a mnemonic, ano ang mga madalas makita in megaloblastic anemia? Di ba meron tayong mnemonics dati na ho-ho? Ano yung ho-ho natin? H for hypersegmented neutrophils, O for oval, oval macrocytes, and the, another HO4, Howell Jolly Bodies. Okay. Unahin natin yung uh, co one cause of megaloblastic anemia is the cobalamin deficiency or the vitamin B12 deficiency. So we have um, different types of mechanism kung bakit bumabagsak ang cobalamin, cobalamin level sa katawan. Unahin natin yung impaired absorption. It is maybe due to, number one, lack of intrinsic factor, which is a major protein used for the absorption of the vitamin B12 at the level of um, ilium. Okay? And the major uh, problem in intrinsic factor is pernicious anemia. 
Ano meron kay pernicious anemia? Overview lang natin. No? We have autoantibodies directed to intrinsic factor. So, therefore, may destruction nito. Wala kang absorption of your vitamin B12. Aside from that, uh, it can be caused by helicobacter pylori infection dahil kailangan din sa vitamin B12 absorption ang presence of hydrochloric acid produced by your parietal cells. Okay? And then next, kapag nag-undergo na, nag ka ng surgery at inalis yung stomach or ilium mo, okay? bakit kasama si stomach? Kasi stomach is the site for, or dito makikita yung mga parietal cells mo no? nakakapag-produce ng hydrochloric acid. Okay? And next, yung lack of other proteins such as your pepsin and haptocorin for the absorption. Vegetarians naman or mga strict vegans. Kasi ang sabi nung bagsa, wala na, walang masyadong um, present vitamin B12 sa mga green leafy vegetables. So, prone, mataas ang predisposition sa, sa anemia ng mga vegetarian. The next condition is the Amersland grassbeck syndrome. And ang defect dito is the formation of cubam. Ano ulit ang ang composition of the cubam. So, cubam is composed of your vitamin B12 and IF, which is your intrinsic factor. And lastly, lalo na sa, um, sa mga Japanese, mahilig sila sa mga raw fish uh, or hindi naluto na mga um, seafood. Okay? So, prone sila magkaroon ng ganitong type of parasite called uh, the Diphilobothrium latum or in layman's term, broad fish tapeworm. This type of uh, tapeworm competes for the vitamin B12 absorption. So, dito ma-appreciate natin yung mga, uh, dahil dito, um, mnemonics natin sa megaloblastic anemia. Diba? Hypersegmented neutrophil, uh, ovalocytes or oval macrocytes, okay? Ito mga yan. And the Howell Jolly bodies. Okay, next na i-discuss natin is the pernicious anemia. Again, this is an autoimmune disorder. Ibig sabihin, meron kang antibodies directed or targeting the uh, own self. Ano yung mga tinatarget niyang uh, protein ba? So, number one, yung mga parietal cells natin and intrinsic factor. These two, um, these two has an important role for the absorption of vitamin B12. Kaya, almost always, no, pernicious anemia will lead to vitamin B12 deficiency. But not all causes of vitamin B12 deficiency is caused by pernicious anemia. Okay, manifestation naman tayo. Unang-unang mong mapapansin sa mga patient, no, it, they have strob, um, reddish, beef-like um, tongue na very glossy okay, in appearance. Itong inflammation na to is what you call atrophic glossitis, no? Merong atrophy sa ating mga papila. So, makikita nyo walang mga papillary uh, formation dyan. Very flat. Okay? And it can extend up to the stomach na tinatawag natin atrophic gastritis. Okay? Due to uh, the destruction of parietal cell, meron kang absence of your hydrochloric acid as termed as achlorhydria. And then, antibody production na ma-appreciate nyo as autoantibodies against intrinsic factor and parietal cells. And lastly, yun nga, anemia, no, na classify natin as uh, macrocytic megaloblastic anemia. Next test is the Schilling's test. And it this is the, a special test to determine or to di differentiate your vitamin B12 deficiency from pernicious anemia. Kasi magkaiba ang management ng dalawang ito. 
Okay? Ang pernicious anemia is an autoimmune disorder. While vitamin B12 deficiency may be caused by pernicious anemia or other uh, causes pa. Okay? So, paano natin ginagawa yung Schilling's test? We have two stages. Okay? Sa so, part 1, magbigay ka muna ng vitamin B12 supplementation kay patient. If na-correct yung anemia niya, no? ibig sabihin, kulang lang talaga siya sa vitamin B12 or vitamin B12 deficiency. If hindi na-correct ang anemia, you proceed to next stage, which is the part 2. You give intrinsic factor. In this uh, stage, kapag na-correct na yung ating anemia, ibig sabihin pernicious anemia ang final diagnosis. Because in pernicious anemia, meron kang antibodies targeting intrinsic factor. So, mababa ang levels mo na intrinsic factor in pernicious anemia. Vitamin B9 deficiency or folic acid deficiency may be caused by the following uh, mechanisms. So first, there is an increased physiologic need, lalong lalo na during pregnancy and lactation. So, ang um, primary role kasi ng folate is that it is uh, needed to uh, form your uh, brain and spinal cord. Okay? Kaya kapag mababa yung folate, uh, folate levels ng mother, yung babies natin, no, magkakaroon ng neural tube defects. And then, another mechanism is that there is an impaired absorption. Okay. Alalahanin natin, no, nasan nga ulit ang site of absorption ng folate? Nasa level of the jejunum. Okay. Pag may problema in the absorption capacity ng jejunum, ang tawag doon is sprue. And, Meron din tayong impaired absorption, lalo na kapag meron kang gluten um, in, uh, intolerance or gluten in, uh, sensitivity. Ang tawag doon is celiac disease. Okay? Ano ba yung mga pagkain na may gluten? Ito, ito, ito yung mga breads. No? Some, some may be found in rice. No? And in other carbohydrate-rich uh, diet or food. Then lastly, yung mga, yung mga cancer patients, no, prone sila magkaroon ng folic acid deficiency dahil nag i sila ng ganitong drug. This is uh, one of the uh, most common chemotherapeutic drugs na being used for the cancer patients. Okay? And it targets, no, it inhibits the folic acid. Therefore, pangit yung mga RBC nucleus natin. So, ito, balikan natin, the neural tube defects in folic acid deficiency. No? Di ba, kailangan ito sa brain and spine de development of the newborns. Kapag bagsak, okay, so pwede magkaroon ng different types of neural tube defect. May mapapansin ka na brain matter sa likuran, no? Tapos may iba, pati yung skull, hindi nag-develop. And dito naman, merong skull pero hindi fully developed. So, lumalabas yung brain matter. So, kailangan ng folate supplementation ng mga pregnant women. Okay. To, to further differentiate the two, dahil parehas nga sila nag kaya mag-develop ng macrocytic megaloblastic anemia, no? ano ang differences nila pagdating sa manifestation? The differences is the uh, presence of neuropathy and psychosis. Dito lang nangyayari yan sa vitamin B12 deficiency. Ano ba yung neuropathy? No? Uh, most common yung peripheral neuropathy. Ito yung condition na kapag may naramdaman kang uh, pins and needles sa mga palms and soles ng katawan natin. Meron, may iba, no? may nakamdaman silang may gumagapang na langgam okay? sa arms and sa legs. Matinding type of neuropathy na yun. Okay? Psychosis naman, uh, pagdating, kunyari, uh, meron silang mga hallucination, visual, auditory, may narinig na hindi, narinig ng normal person. Mga yan. Madalas itong dalawa, 
pagdating kay vitamin B12 deficiency. Okay? With the associated condition naman, magkaiba sila. Ha? Vitamin B12 deficiency can happen to pernicious anemia, bilatum infection or your broad fish tapeworm, the mastic vegans natin, and yung Immersland Grasbeck syndrome which has a defective cubam formation. Sa folate deficiency, madalas dyan yung mga pregnant women, yung mga patient na nagsasuffer ng sprue and celiac disease. Anong difference yung dalawa? Yung sprue has a problem with the absorption in the intestine. Celiac disease is for the gluten in, uh, sensitivity or intolerance. And add natin the methotrexate, which is the most common implicated drug in folate deficiency. So, next topic is the disorders of erythropoiesis. So, meron tayong tinatawag na insufficient erythropoiesis. And this is maybe due to number one, bone marrow failure and two, anemia of chronic kidney disease. So, paano i-differentiate yung two? They have Actually, they have, uh, they can present uh, with abnormal bone marrow activity. Mag differentiate lang tayo dun sa level of erythropoietin. Kapag bone marrow failure, walang problema sa erythropoietin level. Ang may problema mismo ay nasa bone marrow. Sa anemia of chronic kidney disease, ang main problem is the erythropoietin production dahil ang erythropoietin is produced by the kidney cells. Pagbagsak ang erythropoietin, of course, domino effect na yan. Babagsak din or meron na rin tayong abnormal activity sa bone marrow din natin. What are the associated disorders or condition for each um, uh, cause? Dito sa bone marrow failure muna tayo. Associated dito are aplastic anemia. So, from the name it's the, itself, A means absence, plasia means production. So, there is a absence of production of all cells sa aplastic anemia. Myelophysic anemia and myodysplastic anemia, uh, discuss din natin yan further, later, no? For as an overview, Myelophysic anemia is caused by problems of infiltration of tumor cells. Sa myelodysplastic syndrome naman, uh, myelo means bone marrow, dysplasia means abnormal maturation. So, meron tayong abnormal differentiation of your blood cells inside the bone marrow. So, magkaiba tong dalawa ha, aplasia and dysplastic. Aplasia means absence of all cells. Dysplasia means abnormal yung differentiation and maturation. Dito tayo sa anemia of CKD. What are the conditions associated pro, uh, to CKD? Siyempre, nandyan yung hypertension and diabetes mellitus. Pwede yan na um, uh, either way kung sino yung nag-start. Mag so, pwede nag-start si CKD, therefore, na-produce niya itong dalawa, or pwede dito nag-umpisa, and yung eventual result niya is the CKD. So, parang go hand in hand yung dalawa, lalo na lalo na if napapabayaan. Okay, focus tayo dun sa first part of the problem of erythropoiesis, yung bone marrow failure. Okay, again, Normal ang level mo ng erythropoietin. Ang abnormal lang is the activity inside the bone marrow. So, ano yung mga disorders that can be associated with this type of conditions? So, nahin natin ang favorite ng mga uh, examiners, PNH or the paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. As an overview lang, no? This is a genetic defect which involves the deficiency of CD55 and CD59. We will discuss this further later on. And then next, your Fanconi anemia. Ito na yung mga fancy names natin. No? 
So, sa Fanconi anemia, meron kang aplastic anemia, meron ka rin physical malformation, no? may mga defects sa face, and sa uh, uh, extremities, plus cancer susceptibility. Ibig sabihin, pwede ka mag-develop ng cancer of more than one cancer all around the body. Okay? Next, this keratosis congenita. From the name itself, no keratosis, yung mga keratin-containing uh, organs such as yung sa skin. Kaya ang manifestation niya, no, mucocutaneous condition. No? Mucous membrane plus the skin. And then next, schwachmann boldian diamond syndrome. Okay, dito naman may multi-systemic problem tayo. Meron ka ng problema sa bone marrow. Aside from that, meron ka pang problema sa pancreas, bones, and malignancies of the blood such as in leukemia. Next naman, diamond black fan syndrome. This type of failure, bone marrow failure, targets only the red blood cell. Kaya ang term natin dyan, pure red cell aplasia sa diamond black fan syndrome. Drug induced naman. Pwede pwede yan uh, pwede mag-fail ang bone marrow natin if we intake chloramphenicol. Ano ba yung chloramphenicol? This is a drug commonly used to treat salmonella typhi infection or typhoid fever. Madalas yung binibigay sa mga bata before. Pero now, dahil nga dun sa side effect niya na bone marrow failure, hindi, yan, hindi na yan madalas ginagamit. We have to take note, okay? We have to take note na ang chloramphenicol is the implicated drug in aplastic anemia. And methotrexate is the implicated drug naman for folate deficiency. So, huwag mo papalito sa dalawang drug na yan. Next, pwedeng ang bone marrow failure natin is caused by viral infection such as in parvovirus B19. And sa mga patient in, uh, infected with this type of virus, meron ka makikita na slap cheek appearance. So, anong itsura niyan? So, pwedeng blushy yung ating uh, both cheeks kapag may bone marrow, uh, kapag merong parvovirus B19. Ito ay madalas lang makita sa mga kids. Okay? Hindi tayo masyadong naapektuhan ng par parvovirus B19 sa mga age group natin. The next test that we will discuss is for PNH or paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. As an overview lang, no, in this uh, type of condition, the RBCs has a deficient levels of your CD55 or yung DAF. DAF means decay accelerating factor. Ang CD59, MIRL yan, or the membrane inhibitor of reactive lysis. Always remember, ah, 55-59, DAF, MIRL. Back in my, uh, my student days, Ang um, mnemonic ko dito, ang 55, I, I mean yung DF mas nauuna sa I mean yung D sa DF mas nauuna sa M. Okay? So alphabetically arrange lang natin, 55 yung D, 59 yung M. No, mas nauuna ang D sa M. Anyway, okay, doon tayo sa special test. We make use of two types of test. Number one, yung ating sugar water test or yung sucrose hemolysis test. And the other test is, makes use of an acid. No? Hump test or acidified serum lysis test. In PNH, mas prone sa lysis ang mga RBC. Mga normal RBC resist the lysis uh, from the sucrose and the acid. Okay, so ang more hemolysis, mas nagpo-point to PNH. So let's differentiate now the, the, the myelophysic anemia and myelodysplastic anemia. Dahil nung studyante ako dati, nalilito ako dahil halos same sila ng, or magka, halos magka-rhyme sila. Okay? So ano ba ang difference ng dalawang yan? 
My left T sac is the infiltration of your tumor cells inside the bone marrow. Halos na papalitan na niya yung mga bone forming cells natin. Therefore, bagsak lahat ang mga blood cells sa katawan. And these tumor cells may be uh, caused by the met met metastasis from your lung cancer. No? Most common yan na nagkakos ng infiltration sa bone marrow. Sa mga women naman, uh, madalas breast cancer, adult males, colon cancer, and sa mga bata, leukemia. Okay? And makikita mo in peripheral blood smear, ma-appreciate mo yung presence of this type of poikilocyte called teardrop cells or in other books, ang pangalan dacrocytes. So sabi nila, no, halos magkanim ang dacro sa teardrop. Ang, ang tawag namin dyan before is the cryocyte. Dito naman tayo sa myelodysplastic syndrome. So, from the name itself, display siya no, in the bone marrow. So, mayroon tayong abnormal cell maturation or differentiation. The major cause of myelodysplastic syndrome is not known up now, no, may mga theories pero hindi na tayo magdedwell doon kasi hindi pa siya well established. And in this type of um, problem, mukha siyang merong megaloblastic anemia kasi ma-appreciate mo yung mga um, tagito, abnormalities in the PBS such as in hypersegmented neutrophil, oval macrocytes, and how will jolly bodies. With the addition of Cabot rings. Cabot rings kasi it, it, this is a clinical or classical sign na meron kang problem with RBC maturation which majorly happens in myelodysplastic syndrome. Anemia of chronic kidney disease naman tayo. Primary cause of anemia is the uh, low levels of your erythropoietin. Okay? Nagkakaroon ka rin ng anemia, halimbawa, no, kapag in cases ng severe na CKD mo, you present with uremia. So, dalaanan nyo to sa clinical chemistry. No? Ano bang ibig sabihin ng uremia? Mataas ang levels mo ng BUN or blood urea nitrogen. This blood urea nitrogen is a byproduct of protein metabolism na madalas dapat na, na itatapon natin through urine, pero dahil nga may CKD, naiipo yan sa loob ng katawan, causing uremia. And yung uremia, pag madami kang uh, BUN sa blood system mo, nasisira niya yung RBC membrane, causing the formation of bird cells or echinocytes or sea urchin cells. Other Causes of anemia in CKD is the iron deficiency and blood loss, lalong-lalo na pag na madalas mag-hemodialysis yung pasyente. And it is also implicated with ACI, anemia of chronic inflammation, due to the increased levels of hepcidin. Laboratory findings naman natin, no? normocytic, normochromic, lagi si ACKD. With reticulocytopenia. Bakit with reticulocytopenia? Bakit bagsak sa reticulocytes? Dahil bagsak din yung erythropoietin mo. No? So, walang erythropoiesis na nangyayari and hindi nakakapag-compensate ngayon yung katawan mo dun sa increased RBC loss. So, meron kang reticulocytopenia. In PBS, ma-appreciate mo yung birth cells. Ano nga ulit ang other term for birth cells? This, uh, this can be called as echinocytes or sea urchin cells. So, palikan natin yung ating shape of the birth cells. No? Uh, mukha daw silang sea urchins. And in Greek uh, term, uh, echi echino means sea urchin. Kaya tinawag din siyang echinocytes. So, break muna kayo. 
and make sure to come back for the last part of the RBC pathology.